St. George slaying the dragon. You don't get more English than that, do you? These um, great big metal things here, they're sword wrists, where the mayor and sheriffs and people like that would rest their swords. 1708 that one's from. The arms of England. The lion and the unicorn, and I think that's very apt and appropriate for considering what day it is. With loyalty, I serve. <coughs> the pews in that are fairly plain in here, but. Uh, a beautiful church, hence, hence why it required two parts. I don't think that'll be open, it'll be locked, but yeah, but that's a harmonium. You pedal those two things there and play away. Focus on the my pulpit now. For a moment. Oops. I keep pressing the wrong thing for the zoom. That's better. Looks like a face, look. That's where the paint's gone, but doesn't that look like a face? Oh my goodness, oh it does as well. Ooh. Dear oh Lord. the body of Mrs. Mary Booth of this parish widow who died the 23rd day of dash the date's gone look 23rd day of and she was 81 here also the body of Mrs. Mary so the wife of some some gardener who died June 1740 something. In this vault, erected by a faculty, 1746, lies the body of Jemima, late wife of Mr. Robert Smith. Hmm, I don't know if that's Smith or not, but that's damaged. and of their children, Robert and Mary, they moved 
right here. The body of Charles Reynoldson. So obviously some of these get damaged over the years and they're very worn as well. But they have the coats of arms on them. Mr. Charles Dale of this parish, June the 6th, 1779, aged, that's 30 or 80, by the looks of it. Thomas Stollard, November the 17th, 1735, aged 62. Benjamin Henshaw, who departed this life the 11th day of March 1680 something and in the dates gone Martha Henshaw, wife of the above, named Benjamin Henshaw, who departed this life 15th day of June 1697 in the 69th year of her age. Thomas Simmons Gent died August the 3rd, 1717, aged 58. Elizabeth Simmons, wife to Mr. Richard Simmons. Of this parish died April the 30th, 1740, aged 54. Thomas Simmons, merchant, son of the above said Mr. Richard and Elizabeth Simmons, died November the 26th, 1750, aged 38 years. Richard Simmons, Esquire, husband of Elizabeth Simmons and father of Thomas Simmons, merchant, died October the First, 1753, aged 84. That's a pretty good age for a Londoner in those days. And then you have John. The surname is more or less gone, I can't make that out, but below here you've got also Ward Mason, citizen of London, died 25th of October 1790, aged 65. He was an affectionate husband and tender parent and a good man. It's unusual to get things that sentimental on a grave of this age, so that stands as a testament to that man's personality, shall we say. That's very impressive. Last but not least, of course, our altar. Oh, I hate walking on graves, but you have to in a church. It's unavoidable, I'm afraid.
St. John chapter 8 verse This is Rachel Bell, relict of Ralph Bell Esquire. Relict is uh, the old word for widow of. And it's not a very nice thing. Well, look at this, look. 1924. I will, of course, have to take pictures in here once I'm finished. And this is what I didn't cover, so I shall go here now. So, Late Majesty, the Queen of England. We'll be getting back to the Queen in a little bit. Before I go outside. Stunning, look at that. There'll be relics in there. Of course, of St. Magnus the Martyr, this being his church. The Ten Commandments. bread and the wine and the holy water, the sacrament, the blood and the flesh of Christ for communion and the holy sacrament. Well, this uh, beautiful church certainly hasn't failed to disappoint us, has it? And I don't know if you can hear that, but that is the rain pouring down outside. So, as the church always acts as a sanctuary from uh, pain, sorrow, or a 
as you come to in happiness, it can also be a sanctuary from the rain. These here are the church wardens once in the uh, old days. These would have literally been used to keep order in church. of that clock because I do like a ticking clock. I shall give you the view of outside guys and girls now and um, this gentleman has only just started playing so uh, I'll probably
probably I'm going to come back in a minute and do my donation in a minute. I want to show you the history of outside the church, which is very interesting and varied. Majesty the Queen. And here, ladies and gents, you've got from the Roman Wolf, AD 75. Found in Fish Street Hill in 1931. So there's a piece of Roman London there. These are old fire insurance plaques. In the old days before we had a fire brigade, you would get fire insurance and you would have one of these in your house. And if you didn't have one of these on your house and the people that were the firefighters at the time saw your house burning, they would let it burn unless you had a fire plaque. And they rivaled each other, these men, to get competition. This is the churchyard where there's obviously not much left, but here we are. These are pieces of old London Bridge, the original London Bridge, which began here. I'll show you this piece and then I'll give you more of a view of the outside of the church. This will be in two 30 minute instalments, this one. Old London Bridge guys and girls. If stones could talk, they would tell some interesting tales, but some horrible ones too, unfortunately. And there we have one of London Luke's beloved bracket clocks in the year 1709 and it is not working unfortunately St Magnus the Martyr with St Margaret Newfish Street Hill and St Michael Crooked Lane a forward in faith church. The Diocese of London. I shall be going back in here in a minute to get separate recordings of the organ being played because he's only just got started. I want to keep this one to 30 minutes. My, oh, ouch, that hurt. Put my donation in. This churchyard formed part of the roadway approach to Old London Bridge, 1176 to 1831. I'm going to pause you a minute while we cross over the road and you get a better view of the church then, so join me again in a sec. Here we are. The Church of St Magnus the Martyr. Stained glass, as I always say. It's fairly boring from the inside, doesn't it? Uh, from the outside, sorry. But as you've just seen inside, it's a totally different picture. Right. I'll pause you again a sec. There we are. That's a different aspect of the Church of St Magnus the Martyr. And here we are, looking up into Pudding Lane. Thomas, where 
Thomas found his baker's shop was and where the fire began and where Samuel Pepys wrote in his diary that he watched the fire rage all down Fish Street Hill and Pudding Lane. Bear with me a second. Right there in the centre where that plaque is, is the plaque where Thomas Farron's baker's shop was. So that's interesting isn't it? Oh, I'll give this a thing it's due, it copes pretty well with sunlight. My other fern was quite bedazzled by it. There we are ladies and gents and I shall pause you again and you'll join me back over the road again. See you in a minute. There we are. Um, don't anyone think I'm being light-hearted out of disrespect when I do my accents and whatnot? I know it's a, a very horrible day, particularly for a, anyone that is an ardent royalist, but. As the Queen herself said, grief is the price of love, or something along those lines. And there we have yonder little door that gets you up into the church tower, I can imagine. And that's the old uh, bell ringer's loft. I don't know if the bells, the bells are still rung from this bit, but who can tell? Oh, that's bad, isn't it? Look, people put graffiti chalking on the wall, on a church wall. Schweinhunds. And you see, the shared. We are nearly at our 30 minutes for this one. What do we have here? Oh gosh. Is it gifted to the Church of St. Magnus the Martyr by the Worshipful Company of Plumbers in 2019? The chairman of the Plumbers Company. The Church of the Plumbers. Oh sorry, the Church, yeah. The Church of the Plumbers Company. So this is the Guild Church of the Worshipful Company of Plumbers. Uh, full history will follow it in my description. That's very nice, isn't it? Ah, better. You can get a much better view, uh, view of the bracket clock. There we are. I'd love to go up in this bell tower. But... I'll ask, I'll email, email the church warden's the best one to ask. And I won't ask at the moment because because and church wardens are going to be extremely busy. Alright my little flower petals, I hope you all enjoyed that one. Uh, yeah as I say, I've seen quite a few things so far today. The curfew bell of the tower being rung in daytime hours only done in the most momentous or emergency like times um, curfew bell was always rung every evening and as part of the ceremony of the keys when the tower is secured and locked for the night so for the curfew bell to ring in daytime hours is very very unusual and we know why that's happening anyway we are at our 30 minute mark so as this is a London history page of course what better to end you on than a little piece of old London Bridge? Right. Take care all, thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a like and a share. Thank you.